Well, I'm going to introduce um, Davide Faconti. He is a robotics architect and staff engineer at Picnic Robotics. And Davide will be talking about the what he calls obsessive logging. All right, please welcome on stage, Davide Faconti. All right. So I know that you're looking forward for the break. Uh, I won't take much of your time. So let me start. This presentation is a little bit personal. So let me start with something that happened to me a few weeks ago. So Ramon said, uh, you want to ever give a presentation? And I said, of course, no problem. But there is a confession that I need to do right now. So I worked in my career with human robots, uh, AGVs, uh, outdoor, uh, robots in agriculture, but I have no ideas about drones. I've never worked with drones, so I apologize in advance for anything I'm going to say. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, as a, a person that has been in robotics for 20 years, I think that uh, we have a lot of things in common. There's something we have in common in particular, pain. So, in particular, when we are debugging our application, our system. So, I'm going to talk about that. Welcome to You Should Log More. So, this is my journey. The journey is not over yet. It's still ongoing about how to have the best observability and debugability for a drones, a robot, a quadruped, biped, whatever. So a little bit about myself, uh, uh, people know me for a couple of uh, open source projects I've done that uh, seems to be popular, and you know, I've done much, many more things. So I worked, as I said, in, with human robots, uh, perception, manipulation, navigation, localization, real time. Uh, oh, that is two, two times real time control. Redundancy. <laughs> so, so I'm asking you, Let's see if, if you get this right. What is, in general, in software development, the most used debugging tool we have? Of course. <laughs> of course, there it is. This one. Sure, you, you got that right. So, and, and it's not bad. I mean, sometimes you need that to see the evolution of a value over time or events. So, and of course, it is low friction. This is important. So uh, it is apparently the minimum amount of friction, even if you need to recompile and then comment out that printf. So there is work, but we feel like it's less work than the alternatives. So what makes uh, other you know, methods of debugging hard for us? Uh, first of all, we cannot use uh, breakpoints. We cannot stop the execution of our loop in the middle of the flight. Uh, also, the fact that in the environment like you know ROS that is uh, focused on multiprocessing, uh, you know you cannot you cannot affect one of the components without affecting in a, some in indirect way the others. And also, you want to um, debug the entire system, maybe not just one of the nodes. Uh, also, sometimes you need to work with embedded. This is particularly. Um, meaningful for you, uh, so you have even more constraints that we sometimes have in other robotics application. And uh, this is important, we must not affect the real-time performance of uh, any application that has a real-time control loop. So, but there is one thing that we really, really don't want, that is repeating a failing, failed experiment. So. This is why the most effective way to debug our application is logging. But let's take a pause now. I want to tell you a story. So um, some of you may remember that, uh, many won't. So this is something from 10 years ago. So let's go back in time. So this is something that uh, I think was pivotal for uh, a lot of robotics, in particular for humans. Uh, the Dark Robotic Challenge uh, was uh, created in the aftermath of uh, the disaster of the tsunami and uh, the Fukushima uh, accident uh, with the nuclear plant. 
So they said uh, if we add at that time a robot that could go inside the nuclear plant, we could minimize the damage. But there was no robot that could do that. And it was really a failure for us in robotics. So DARPA created this challenge, to, and uh, the purpose was to uh, allow, let's say, it was really focused on humans somehow. It was not supposed to be a human robot, but all the tasks were kind of tailored for human robots. So the idea is that a robot could drive a regular vehicle, uh, go inside a building, uh, do some operation like drilling uh, and uh, climbing stairs or walk over um, rough terrain. And so they were simulating kind of a disaster scenario. And that for us is like the Olympic Games of robotics. So it is something, so these kind of things happen every few years. We had two years ago the subterranean challenge. Uh, you know, I couldn't say no, I needed to be there. So I joined one team and that was a blast. Uh, um, so let me show you how that went. Do we have sound? It was a huge success, so... <laughs> okay, next slide. Yep, yes, thanks. So, I was in the uh, IHMC team. We, were, we got the second prize, that was great. And um, it was really a, a great experience for me personally, but uh, there is something that really changed the, the course of my, you know, my life as a developer. And that thing is that uh, that particular team was really disconnected from the ROS community. They had their own uh, system. It was kind of monolithic, uh, written in Java, but worked really well. And what really surprised me is that they had a fantastic system for logging uh, thousands and thousands of variables. So, you know, input before a function, output after, after that function, states, uh, intermediate values, so the idea is that uh, logging so much data at 300 hertz, uh, they could uh, pinpoint uh, every problem. So for me, I would, ROS was already there, and ROS bugs uh, and, and Arbits uh, were already great. But that was a completely another level. So every time the robot uh, in our experiment uh, uh, was falling, we would just stop, don't repeat the experiment, just go through all these logs, uh, and figure out why that happened. Maybe a sensor saturated uh, or a certain control algorithm got uh, uh, an, an unexpected result. And you could do that because there was this combination of a lot, lot of uh, data logging uh, and at the same time uh, they developed in-house their own visualization tool that uh, was really intuitive and allow people to search in these thousands of variables and and plot them in a way um, very quickly. And I said, we need this in robotics. Why don't we have that? We need that. Uh, so, so the rest is history. Uh, I said, I must do that uh, for myself and, and others. So this is how I started uh, uh, working on this project. So raise your hand, who knows about Plot Juggler? Oh, there are many! <laughs> I was going to give a demonstration and show you how it works, I don't need to. Okay, fantastic. So you know, you know what it is about. 
And um, you know, the, the nice thing about it is that I try to make it uh, as ROS independent as possible, as horizontal, horizontal as possible. So it is plugin based, you can very easily um, add uh, new um, protocols uh, or transport mechanism. Uh, you can use uh, WebSocket, MQTT, Protobuf, flat buffers, uh, pure JSON or XML, or ROS1, ROS2. PX4, the PX4 is kind of funny. I was in, in a um, uh, lab where my colleagues, not me, were working with drones. And I said, you know what? I can create a plugin for your loss. Let me do it. And it took one day. And, and that's how Plotjuggler reached the, the drone community. Um, and then, you, as probably you know already, uh, it is much better than MATLAB. You can uh, use <laughs> low pass filter, um, uh, derivative, integrals, fast Fourier transform. Uh, so a lot of operation, also your custom formulas, formulas in Lua. So it is, for many people, a one-stop uh, uh, place to visualize your data. First of all, navigate your data, visualize it, and, and do some processing. And uh, the philosophy behind that is that I want to minimize the time from when you open the log to when you have an answer to your question. So how can, you, can I minimize that time? How can I remove the friction and be as intuitive as possible? So many of my design decisions are based on this philosophy. This means that uh, you know, there is a, an intuitive uh, drag and drop interface uh, that uh, you know, loading must be fast. Uh, you should be able to arrange all the, that data in different uh, uh, plots, uh, widget and tasks and layout. Uh, save that so you don't need to do it again the next time. Um, also, it is kind of uh, focused on comparing data. You can open two files, compare uh, how they differ. Um, also, all the features that are more, uh, used more most frequently are up, you know, exposed in the UI, and those that are not so common are kind of, kind of hidden, because the concept is you don't want to clutter the interface. You want to expose what is used more often. So this is really important. And I will say that uh, you know, this pet project I had for a few years now really helped me to become a better uh, software engineer, to think more about usability. Um, so there's just one missing piece here in the equation. So as I said, when I started this, I said the ROS bucket are good enough. Um, I love ROS bucket, but I want more. I want more data. So I think that something that is kind of missing now is what I call fearless uh, obsessive logging. Uh, by that I mean uh, uh, that one million data points per second should be the norm, so usually 10,000 variable at 100 hertz or 1,000 at 1 kilohertz. Uh, the API should remove all the friction, should be as easy as a printf in your code. Uh, so no um, creating custom messages, uh, creating publisher, you, you want to remove that friction. Uh, of course, low latency, in particular from the point of view of the collie. So, if you are collecting data in a real-time loop, you don't want to affect the performance of that real-time loop. Uh, so you want to be friendly to real-time applications. Uh, must be as space efficient as possible. Of course, this data should go somewhere, but we can try to minimize the overhead and also do uh, you know, streaming uh, um, compression. Um, also, you need to decide if you want to store it directly in your process or use inter-process communication. Uh, IPC, not ICP. Bad. And, uh, and, uh, and probably I also want a rolling buffer. So if I have a very long... Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> you got one. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if, uh, if your application is uh, running for a long time, you want to have some kind of a rolling buffer in memory and then uh, um, save it uh, on file maybe on just the last five minutes or something like that. So this is my dream. This is what I'm, uh, actually uh, I'd like to add. So in ROS and ROS2, there is this uh, almost unknown package uh, uh, called PAL statistics. Uh, 
Uh, this, I think it's good enough. He does a lot of what I want want to do. Maybe it could be a little bit more efficient, but if you're in, in the Ross uh, ecosystem, check it out. Uh, in PIX4, I don't know, you tell me, are you happy with the uh, U-Log? Is there anything we can do better? So this is kind of discussion I like to have uh, between our two communities. Um, but of course, of course, uh, I'm working on that. So I'm working on a better version of uh, Pulse Statistics. I'm trying to make it uh, a little bit more decoupled uh, as I do with all my projects from ROS. So ROS friendly, but not mm, with ROS baked in. Uh, so this is still a uh, work in progress. I think that uh, if I can interact with you and discuss what are your needs, uh, this can go in the, in the right direction. Um, so, uh, let's say, stay tuned. Uh, I will soon present this, this new library. And that's it. So you may ask, what was this even about? I didn't learn anything. So this, is, this was really a celebration of the fact that any of us can give a contribution to the community through open source. Uh, I was lucky that uh, you know, I did that primarily for myself, but also uh, trying to help others. Uh, so I think this is um, what we do in open source. So I think that's great. That is great. Um, it is about, as, as you know, about observability and debuggability and how that is important for us and need to be done differently than other industries. And also a call of action to action, say, if this is important for you, contact me and we can make this happen together. So thank you very much for your attention.